America, the place where freedom reigns and the frontier makes a nation, at least according to Frederick Jackson Turner. Hey, Cypher here with another Historians Who Changed History, this time Frederick Jackson Turner. But first, we have to conquer the ideal of American exceptionalism. It's the idea that America has something particularly special about it. You know, something that makes this nation particularly wonderful. You know, because of the ever-present freedom and whatnot. I could do an entire episode about American exceptionalism, but it's kind of hard to pin down, since everyone has their own opinion of what makes America great. But besides all of that showboating, there is significant historical theory behind that. And no one has given American exceptionalism such a credible voice as Frederick Jackson Turner with his frontier thesis. In fact, nearly everyone has used the frontier thesis, consciously or unconsciously, as part of their explanation for American exceptionalism. It has truly given identity to America, and that's no small feat. Frederick Jackson Turner was a fairly minor historian before bursting onto the scene in 1893. He had done his dissertation on the early Wisconsin fur trade, so nobody actually expected anything special out of him. He was just another presenter at the American Historical Association during the World's Columbian Exposition. The American Historical Association, or the AHA, was much more popular back then, so they actually had big, crowded presentations. His speech was on a paper he was about to publish called the Significance of the Frontier in American History. After the speech, he was a household name and his essay became a bestseller instantaneously. It held a powerful effect on the American psyche, to say the least. The theory itself is actually pretty elegant. Essentially, the American character was forged in the wilderness as successive waves of civilization spread westward, thereby making the frontier the most important part of American history. First came the explorers, then the frontiersmen like fur trappers, then the next wave was land users like cowboys and miners, then the final wave were settlers. You know, people like homesteaders and farmers who were there to live on the land. Through these successive waves, the line of civilization moved westward, and they conquered savage lands and forged the American identity as a frontiersman. Freedom wasn't realized as an aimless ability to do anything, but the strength to take on Manifest Destiny and head west. This is why we so revere the Wild West in our culture. Now, needless to say, that was a very popular thesis. Turner himself was simply lamenting the close of the frontier which the census had decreed in 1890. But suddenly, American exceptionalism was given voice. The market for Western fiction grew exponentially until it became the predominant form of fiction in America. By the time Hollywood became influential, their main source of revenue was Old Westerns. And that trend continued into the 1970s. But something changed then that made Westerns less influential and thereby the frontier thesis of Turner's. You see, after Turner's thesis was published, American historians really started to focus on the West. Turner gave purpose to those studies, and so his theory reigned supreme for years. Western history steadily divided because of this, though. As you might have guessed, there's obviously problems with American exceptionalism and even the frontier thesis itself. And a student of Turner's formed the perfect opposition. Hubert Eugene Bolton created an alternative theory that is often called Borderlands history. It had a different emphasis, and it eliminated American exceptionalism from the equation. Part of the problem with the frontier thesis is that it basically said that the lands that were being civilized were savage and uncivilized. You know, that white men came and civilized the nation, because only the American spirit could have civilized those lands, and the Indians who populated it prior, well, they were just savages. Of course, it is only referring to them as savages in the old anthropological sense. You know, where cultures are categorized by structure and function from hunter-gatherer to egalitarian republics. Which is not inherently racist, but pretty easily misconstrued as such. 
By the 1960s, Bolton's methods had come into vogue and the Frontier Thesis was thoroughly discredited. Further politicization of American history through the Vietnam War and the counterculture drove the change. But the problem was, Borderlands history left no room for American exceptionalism. And so people lost that frontier ideal. And that's why the Western genre in Hollywood died in the 1970s. Of course, there was a backlash, so a lot of popular history has to do with the frontier thesis and carries on that tradition, whereas academia has pretty much moved on. So the frontier thesis still continues to play a significant role. Every time you hear someone claiming that America is special in some way, you can pretty much guarantee that the frontier thesis is somewhere in the rhetoric. Frederick Jackson Turner may not be a household name anymore, but I guarantee you've heard this theory in some form or another. You know, that standard kind of thing where life on the frontier makes the American spirit. It still informs the American mythos and tells us what to revere, whether or not it's invalid. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some previous episodes while you're at it. I'll see you next time. Hubert Eugene Bolton, I mean seriously, what's up with guys using their middle names? And that's why the western genre in Hollywood died in the 1970s. Of course, there was a backlash, it's called the Reagan administration. <laughs> no. No. He was just another presenter at the meeting of the American Historical Association at the World's Trade World's Columbian Expedition. He was just another presenter at the American Historical Association's pre, pre during the World's Columbian Exposition. That is hard to say. He was he was just one of many pros. He was just one of many presenters at the American Historical Association. <laughs> He was just one of many presenters at the His American Historical Association of the uh, at dirt. Mm. I just spat all over myself. <laughs>